Hi, this is Elliot Fishman. Welcome back to part two of our talk about small bowel gist tumors. And last time I spoke a lot about some of the principles, the presentation, CT findings, and I showed a lot of cases on the duodenum. But remember, gist tumors occur anywhere in the bowel. And let me go through a number of the different presentations. Here's a mass. I have to admit, if I look at this, there's a tumor in the patient's uh, junction of duodenum and jejunum. Basically, it's a ligament of trites. And I would have said this is going to be an adenocarcinoma. It's not very vascular. That's a good location for adenocarcinoma. There are a few nodes in the mesentery. Here it is again shown on the coronal views very nicely going into the uh, duodenum exophytic in part, but you know, it's a very good example. Could it be lymphoma? I guess theoretically it can. When you look at the MIP imaging, you see a little bit of stretching of the vessels, the jejunal vessels off the SMA, but quite frankly, that could be almost anything. Nothing really special about it. Here it is on venous phase. You see the liver lesion, which is a cyst. Again, you can see the mass is relatively hypovascular. A big proportion of it is exophytic. It will be good for lymphoma. It would be good for adenocarcinoma, but this is just tumor. Here it is very nicely shown on the patient's um, cinematic rendering. Again, first you see the stretching of the vessels, then you see the mass, the exophytic nature of the lesion, very nicely shown. Another example, here's a mass which is in the jejunum. It's solid, you can see that on the axial view of the first one, it goes exophytic. On the coronal view, it's straight on, so it makes it seem like it's totally intraluminal. This lesion is vascular, but it also has calcification present. You could see it very nicely here, the vascularity of the lesion. This is on the arterial phase, volume rendering, and I'll show it to you a bit more on the MIP phase. Increased vascularity, some displacement of vessels, and when I take it to the MIP, you really appreciate the exophytic nature of the lesion. Look how nicely it is exophytic. You're never going to see carcinoids exophytic. Adenocarcinoma lymphoma can be, I guess I could describe it as exophytic, but that's by direct invasion, not something that's kind of sitting out like that. Beautiful example shown here, and really nicely shown here as well on the cinematic. Just a wonderful example. And just to bring the point home about looking at that same lesion on a coronal view, you don't quite appreciate the exophytic nature as much. But if you look hard, bottom image on your right, you do. But if I plan it correctly, it looks like it's totally intraluminal on this view. So again, you want to make sure you look at all of the views. Uh, but just a very nice appearance. You can see the uh, textural changes on the cinematic, the vascularity of the lesion. And again, a really good look of where cinematic can be helpful for picking up small bowel tumors and for staging these lesions. I also like to show this, and I show a few other images in this case, showing you how nicely we can do things in terms of looking at the small bowel, looking at the folds in the stomach, and just the range of appearances you can do with cinematic rendering. Recent article actually impressed by uh, Williams and Bowman. Malignant gist tumors can present with metastasis to liver or mantuum peritoneum. Lymphatic spread and retraction of the mesentery are unusual features compared to other malignancies. Recurrent disease following resection is not uncommon in the setting of malignant tumors, malignant gist, especially the aggressive ones. And here's just a good example, large mass left lower quadrant. This could be an adenocarcinoma, it could be lymphoma. There's no bowel obstruction. It's large and ulcerating, not that vascular. But look at the liver mass, large cystic necrotic tumor. Here it is on the MIP imaging with the neovascularity and the stretching of the vessels present. The large necrotic tumor, very nicely seen here. When we talk about cystic or necrotic mets to the liver, we talk about ovarian cancer and we talk about gist tumors. We see melanoma as well, and there are a few other tumors, but gist tumor is definitely in that category. And these coronal views very nicely show you how large the tumor is in the left lower quadrant and the liver mets. One thing I do notice, and I've said this before, because these tumors are so exophytic that it's not uncommon for the tumors to not obstruct bowel, well, and you would assume something this large must be obstructing. And here's another example, right lower quadrant, large mass, somewhat necrotic, it's exophytic off bowel, you can see it here very nicely, 
But, you know, it's not obstructing the bowel. It's homogeneous, a little bit of model enhancement on these coronal views. Just a very nice example. Now, these large tumors present with mass effects, present with pain, but, um, you know, what's really important to recognize is the smaller ones like this are the ones that present with GI bleeding. This was a patient with GI bleeding, did not know the cause of the GI bleeding, but there's a mass. Now, I have to admit, when I talk about how sometimes you can't tell carcinoids from just this is a good example you see it here you see it on the MIP imaging there's some neovascularity present it looks like it's endoluminal which again would push you toward carcinoid perhaps but you can see the vascularity can be difficult that was a gist similar location another patient you see the mass here on this view it's really exophytic when I see that exophytic nature I'm going with gist over anything else but if you bring it into the right plane, you could see how you could make it seem like it's endoluminal. So you need to be very, very careful. And this was another case of a patient with a GIST tumor that presented with GI bleeding. Another example here, look at the fourth portion of duodenum. There's an enhancing lesion. I guess it could be a carcinoid, could be a GIST. You see the vascularity. Here is again the coronal view, which kind of gives you the dumbbell configuration. If you think back, I'm beginning to get a better feel of how these lesions look. This dumbbell configuration is very nice. Here it is with volume rendering, really nicely shown there. Now, sometimes the gist tumors occur near the ampulla, and in a case like this, you're kind of stuck. Could this be a neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas? Yes. Could this be an ampullary tumor? Yes. Could this be a duodenal tumor? Yes. Could this be a tumor between the duodenum? and the pancreas, and the answer would be yes. You start looking at more images, the coronals do help you. I don't think the epicenter is really great for a pancreatic origin, but I couldn't exclude it. I think it's more likely duodenum. This was a gist tumor. Again, the exophytic nature was somewhat challenging as it sits near the ampulla and pushes near the pancreas. So I think we could be 100% certain there's a tumor here. We could be 100% certain it's coming out but maybe less than 100% in defining what it is. And here's just another set of images. Now I mentioned that abdominal pain, GI bleeding are common presentations. I have seen a couple cases with intussusception. You see the intussusception in the lower pelvis here? I'll just circle it for you. And when you look at it on the coronal view, you can see it's a small and what was an intermittent intussusception. But if I look more carefully and narrow the windows, you see a one centimeter mass at the arrow, and that was causing the intussusception. Now, sometimes just tumors just are there. This is a patient who had a gastrojejunostomy. Everything looks good, but look at the patient's duodenum. You see the anastomosis? There's a two centimeter just tumor. We missed that on three studies. Here, you know, you can see it washes out quickly. It's hard to see, but it's there. So it's easy to miss just tumors. And here's just another example of really showing you uh, exactly how you can miss these tumors and one of the challenges in picking these lesions up. So I think it's very hard. Um, this case you can see when you look at carefully on the early phase imaging, it's very hard to see a mass. But on the venous phase, you see that two centimeter mass in the patient's ilium proximally on the left side. Again, exophytic and vascular. Now, we mentioned on one of our first slides that there are a number of conditions that increase the risk of small bowel gist tumors. The most classic is going to be neurofibromatosis type 1. Uh, gist can also be seen in females as part of the Carney syndrome or in males as part of Carnegie Strachicus syndrome. But Again, you want to be thinking about these possibilities. Here's a patient with an adrenal mass, which was a pheochromocytoma. And then the patient also has, as you look carefully, a one centimeter gist tumor in the duodenum. The most impressive thing is that right adrenal mass, which was a pheochromocytoma, and pheos are common in neurofibromatosis. They're often bilateral. Here it looks unilateral but you see that patient's gist tumor, which is exophytic, nicely shown as I go through the various images. So 
Again, something careful to look for. You can see why you could easily miss this duodenal lesion. It's small, but also you're concentrating on the patient's adrenal. So when, you, when you're doing these patients, von Lindau patients, make sure you look very, very carefully. And here's just one more set of images. And here, uh, it's interesting, this is the venous phase, but the enhancement, the peripheral enhancement is actually better seen venous than arterial. That does happen, but it's uncommon. I mentioned about neurofibromatosis and just tumors. Here's another one, very much like the cases I showed you before. It's larger, it's exophytic, it's very vascular. Just a beautiful example, and there it is on the coronal display. Very nicely shown there and shown here as well. So you really can get a feel as you start looking at a lot of these. I think one problem is you never see a bunch of them together and so you don't think about how similar they look. Here's a few more views with the volume rendering showing you the vascularity, particularly the peripheral vascularity uh, as things wash out, but just a very good example of how a vascular just tumor indeed looks. And here's two more axials in 3D volume rendering. And in this patient, you can see the lesion, of course, and the patient has very vague neurofibromas in the skin, which are really hard to see. Now, let's go another patient where the skin lesions are incredible for neurofibromatosis, but look at those multiple vascular small bowel lesions in the patient's jejunum. You can see them more distally as well, but look, left upper quadrant, look at those vascular lesions. They're numerous. There's increased fat in the mesentery and mesenteric masses or mesenteric nodes as well. And this is a patient who had neurofibromatosis, one, but has multiple just tumors. There are multiple enhancing lesions in bowel, and that's a very, very classic thing for neurofibromatosis, not just solitary. In non-neurofibromatosis patients, you're not gonna see multiple neurofibromas typically. It's this scenario where you do see them. And here's just the patient's skin. Look at the extent of the neurofibromas on the cinematic rendering. And here's the cinematic rendering of the abdomen, bone for the most part removed. Look at the enhancing lesions in the left upper quadrant. That's classic gist tumors. Okay, vascular lesions. And here it is again, showing both proximal jejunum but also in the ilium. And here it is again, just a another case with multiple neurofibromas and then the small bowel neurofibromas as well. So I think one of the things we like to think about is most neurofibromas are just incidental cases, sporadic in nature, but there is hereditary neurofibromatosis. And the thing you really have to think about is then you look at skin lesions, then you look at small bowel lesions, which are indeed gonna be common. Just a couple last words on treatment. Surgical resection is the mainstay for therapy of small bowel tumors when there's no metastasis. You can, at times, if you're very good, do laparoscopic surgery, but then it needs to be small tumors. Um, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, imitanibib uh, is really what you wanna do is first line therapy for patients with poor surgical candidates or show evidence of recurrence or metastasis. Many people use it as a maintenance therapy, also as an adjuvant therapy. Once you have a just tumor and you have a resected surveillance every six months, or depending on its aggressiveness, three to six months in the beginning. Low-grade tumors, you can stretch it out a bit. You can use CT and MR if you want to follow these patients. Dual phase imaging is recommended, as I showed you many of the lesions. Our best seen are only seen in the arterial phase, and that becomes very important. Let's look at some conclusions. One, gist tumors. Most common mesenchymal tumor of the GI tract. High increased incidence and penetrance in neurofibromatosis. Small bowels, the second most common site, about 30% of cases. Can present as GI bleed, can present as bowel obstruction, can present as abdominal pain. Again, the smaller ones present as GI bleeding. A challenge is separating these lesions from other lesions when they're small. Think about carcinoid. Larger tumors are usually of higher grade than smaller tumors, and so treatment is more aggressive. And CT is excellent for lesion detection and staging. So with that, let me summarize. I've showed you the spectrum 
of small bowel neurofibromatosis. I showed you a lot of cases with axials and coronals and 3Ds and cinematic. I spoke about some of the principles. I spoke about the challenge of detection. I didn't go into protocol for study protocol too carefully, so let me tell you that at the very end. Dual phase imaging, diaphragm to pelvis is key. Cystic lesions in the liver are common, it means metastasis, not a complex cyst. And again, if you're very careful, these lesions can be very subtle. Fast injections, water as an IV contrast agent is indeed a perfect way of doing it. So with that, that finishes part two of our small bowel gist tumor talk. I hope you enjoyed it, and let me go back now and work on some more talks. Catch you later. Bye. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctss.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.